So this is chapter three, page 33, 49 of one variable. It's two parts of this chapter. <clears throat> I'm gonna start the first part here in this PowerPoint and part two it's in another PowerPoint. So first, we, I think that you'll feel that it's really easy, this part, not that much hard. So I will start first by, what does it mean? Binomial, trinomial, monomial, and why do we call all those things polynomial? <clears throat> A polynomial of two terms, Polynomial, if you, you read the word poly, it, it means many, okay? When I have just two terms, I call it binomial. Here I have two terms. This is the first term, 7x, y squared, plus 2y. How do we know that those are two terms? I, I need to circle the operations, addition or, or subtraction. So I have here one operation plus, so how many terms we have? Two. If I look at this one, how many terms we have? This is one term. This is another term, this is a third term, so it's called trinomial. Like, keep sure you can call it uh, polynomial, but those, when I have two, it's, it's easier to say binomial and three, trinomial. From three, it comes three, B and two, okay? The leading coefficient of a polynomial is the coefficient of the variable with the largest exponent. What does it mean? So if I give you this example here, <clears throat> you know what this from last year. So if I give you this example here, 6x cubed minus 2xy plus 8x plus 3. If you notice here, I need to have one variable, okay? What is the highest degree is x3. So what will be my leading coefficient here? My leading coefficient is 6. It's the coefficient of the biggest term with the highest degree. What is the degree of this polynomial 3? Because I have it, this is the highest degree. So the degree is 3. And 15 is called the constant. Those are easy notes from last year. <clears throat> this is the first part, it's called definition. Uh, uh, this is the definition for the poly. Let's pass to the second. How do we add and subtract polynomials? Also, we know, you know it, but I really just need to pass quickly. If I want to add those two polynomials, for example, I need to add the same term. And here, if I want to add this one, we need to add 5x cubed plus 3x cubed, 6x squared minus 12x squared, and 3 minus 10. I'm sure you don't need to write it step by step like this, you can do it directly, but we need to group and add the same terms. And all the time, you need to write it from the highest to the lowest degree. So this polynomial has degree three, and if I want to ask about the leading coefficient, it's eight. Another one, I can add three polynomials also. I add the x cubed together, the x squared together, the x together, and the constant. You know all this from last year. And if I add here, 6x cubed plus 2x cubed plus 5x cubed, it gives me 13x cubed. Now, I just have minus 7x squared. Then x, I have 11x minus 3x plus x gives me 9x. And minus 21 plus 10 plus 5 gives me minus 6. This is a degree here is 3, not 13. Huh? The leading coefficient is 13. The degree is 3, and the leading coefficient is 13. That is a mistake there. Let's continue now. The subtraction, you need to be very careful, okay? First, when I'm, I'm doing subtraction of two polynomials, sorry, I need to be very careful. So I'm gonna do it. I hope that you're gonna see it in the end. I'm so sorry. So I will start first to write 4x squared as it is, minus 5xy. You can do this at the same time, and in the end, when you're going to see the answer, you'll check your answer, plus 2y squared. Now, I have here minus before the part. It means minus 1 times minus x squared becomes plus x squared. Minus 10 plus minus 2xy, as I have here minus 1, and minus 1 times minus y squared plus y squared. And now, all what you need to do is to combine the like terms. When you have x and y, it, you cannot org order it, and I have many variables. Okay, so no problem if you wrote x, y, then x, then y. It's not a big deal. So I have minus 5xy minus 2xy, it's equal to minus 7xy. Then I have 4x squared plus x squared gives me plus 5x squared. And I have 2y squared plus y squared gives me 3y squared. So this is my final answer. Here I cannot order it. I cannot arrange because I have x and y. Okay? So I cannot talk here about the highest degree and the leading coefficient because I don't have the same variable. 
I should have the same variable x, all of it x or all of it y to talk about leading coefficient and the highest degree. Okay, I will wait a little bit to be sure that you will be able to see the writing. I hope that you can see it. Then I will move to the second part. I have here the final answer. 5x squared plus 7xy minus 7x plus 3y squared, but also and I did it step by step. Okay. Okay. I will move to the second part. How to multiply polynomials? To multiply a polynomial by a monomial, use the distribution property and the rule for multiplying exponential expression. Let's see what does it mean. If I want to multiply 2x by 3x squared plus 2x minus 1. Also, I need to distribute. We saw this in the radicals. But here, you need to be very careful with x and times x squared. Also, we saw this rule in the exponent rule. So, when I'm multiplying, so I need to multiply 2x times 3x squared, 2x times 2x, and 2x times minus 1. What is 2x times 3x squared? It's equal 2 times 3 first gives me 6. x times x squared, this is the rule of the exponent. What happened to the exponent? We added. When we are, when we are multiplying two numbers having the same base, what will happen to the exponent? We add. Here I have 2x times 2x. We do 2 times 2, 4. x times x is x squared. And minus 2x times minus 1, sorry, plus 2x times minus 1, it's minus same here, you need to be very careful if you have more than one variable, so you don't do any, cal any calculation mistake. So the same, I will multiply the first one by the first one, the second by the, the first by the second, the first by the last one. You need to be very careful here. I have minus 3 times 5 minus 15, okay. x squared times x squared is x4, and y, there is no another y. Here I have minus times minus plus, 3 times 2, 6 x squared times x, x3, y times y, y2. It's not hard, but you really need to take your time. Minus 3 times 7 minus 21, x squared, there is no x, so it's x squared, and y times y squared, y3. Also here, I cannot talk about here ordering and writing from the highest to the lowest degree, okay? Because I have two variables. That's it, it's easy. Now if I have more than, I have two, but also the same idea. I will distribute. So how are we going to do it? Yeah. I will start to multiply x by each one. And then I'm going to choose another color, the blue, for minus 1 by each one of those two. Step by step. It's a distribution property. You know it from last year. So I will start. x times 2x squared. You can do it alone and then check your work. 2x3 x times plus 7x, if you want to do the sign first, plus times plus gives me plus, x times 7x, 7x squared. x times plus 3, plus times plus, plus, plus 3x. Then I will move to the minus 1, I will change the color because it's I'm doing. Now minus 1 times 2x squared, it's minus 2x squared. Minus 1 times 7x, it's minus 7x. And minus 1 times plus 3, it's minus 3. And all what we need to do now is to simplify, add the common terms, and arrange it from the highest to the lowest degree. I just have 1, 2x, 3, so it's 2x, 3. I have 7x squared minus 2x squared, it's 5x squared plus 5x squared. You can see the answer in the end, but I want to do step by step. 3x minus 7x, it's minus 4x and minus 3. See, there is a uh, mistake here. This is minus 3, this is not 3. This is minus 3. So that's it. Okay, I will wait a little bit as usual to be sure that you can see the writing and then I will pass to the second part. I hope that you can see it. Let's move. You can see it? I hope that. Yeah. To multiply the sum and difference of two terms, use this pattern. So here, I'm giving you the identity now. It's easier. So if you see A plus B times A minus B, we saw it already when we were rationalizing the denominator when it's an expression and we multiply by the conjugate. So the, the answer is A squared 
minus b squared. That why? Because if you develop, if you distribute, means you're gonna have this one. If I distribute normally, but faster, I directly can use a squared minus b squared. This is the proving why it's a squared minus b squared. But you can directly use it a squared minus b squared. Example, if I have 3x plus 2 times 3x minus 2, directly, this is a minus b times a plus 2. So it's a squared, 3x squared minus 2 squared. What is 3x squared? Be careful. 9x squared, not 3x squared. 9x squared minus 4. Another one, x plus 1 times x minus 1. Also, it's a squared minus b squared. So it's x squared minus 1 squared. So it's x squared minus 1. It's really important. Miss to memorize those identities because we need it in part two in this chapter and part two it's very important <clears throat> now here we have another identity a plus b squared and a minus b squared also you can do it like this and you did it like this in number 20 if you remember in the radicals but i want you to memorize the identity it's faster so it's a squared plus 2ab plus b squared and if i have a minus b squared it's you're gonna see it here I don't know why this one is showing at the end. I should fix it. Yeah, a minus b squared. It's a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. And this is two examples of those. If I have 2x minus 2 squared, so I, it means that 2x is a a squared. That's it. I'm writing it as it is a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. So 2x squared gives me 4x squared. 2 times 2 times 2. 2 times 2, 4 times 2, 8. And minus 8x plus 4. And if it's plus in between, so I use the identity a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So it's x squared plus 2 times x times 3y. Now it's 2 times 3, 6xy plus 9y squared. Miss those, the identities, we're going to use it too much in this chapter. So please, miss, try to memorize it. Let's see, this is an example, geometry linked to algebra. Look at it. The length of a rectangle is x plus 5 feet. The width is x minus 6. Find the area of the rectangle in terms of the variable x. We know already what is the area of a rectangle. Ready? Done. It's length times width. So I just need to multiply x minus 6 times x plus 5. And in the end, I'm going to have, I'm doing now a normal operation like we did the preceding parts. And I will have after distributing the answer, x squared minus x minus 30. This is the area of this rectangle in terms of x. Okay? And we can write the, the unit if you want feet squared because we know that the unit of the area is all the time some centimeter squared, meter squared. It's linked to the unit given, but it's squared. Now let's go now to this part. I still have two parts. Those are very easy. How to calculate the value of the polynomial corresponding to the given value? Example, I can give you, for example, p of x is equal x squared minus 5x minus 24. Find p of 2. What does it mean, p of 2? If I look here, this is p of x. So I'm, I'm replacing x by what? By 2. So all, all what we need to do is to replace x by 2. 2 squared 4 minus 5 times 2 minus 10 minus 24. And I will use my calculator to find my answer. It's minus 30. So it's easy. It's, it's nothing. Just replacing and calculating. The last part is how to determine if a given value is a root or sometimes we call it zero or solution. Those are called, are the same, yeah, the, uh, synonym, Re root, zero, solution, okay? How do we check if this value is a root for the polynomial or a solution or a zero? A is the root for P of X if and, all, if and only if P of A is equal to zero. It's very simple. We're going to replace again like we did in the preceding part. But if I got the answer zero, it means it's a root. If I didn't get zero, it means it's not a root. That's it. So if I replace, for example, for p of x equal x2 minus 3x minus 8. Let's replace x by minus 1. I will have minus 1 squared 1, minus 3 times minus 1, 3, and minus 8. I will calculate 1 plus 3 minus 8 is minus 4. Is it equal to zero? No. So I can deduce that minus 1 is not a root. It means it's not a solution for this equation. Or I can say it's not a zero for this equation. But if I will replace P of X, X by 1, I will have 1 squared, 1, minus 3 times 1, minus 3 plus 3, uh, plus 2, sorry. So 1 minus 3, minus 2 plus 2, 0. What does it mean? 
It means one because when I replaced by one, I got an answer zero. It means I can say about one is zero. So that's 